Hi students, I'm Sonia from Vidya Guru, starting a new session on current affairs. This is going to be the first part for the month of September, September 2023. So we are going to start the session on current affairs. But before starting, I wish to actually tell you that this session will remain in English medium throughout. If you're not comfortable with the language, you can actually switch to the Hindi session that is also there in the playlist. We record such sort of complete English medium for our students from South India, for our students from Northeast India, like those students who are in Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Telangana, those students who are in Tamil Nadu or Kerala or in Assam, those who are not very comfortable with Hindi, we record such sort of complete English medium sessions for them. If you are comfortable, you can watch the session in English medium only. But if you like the session, do press the like button. I'll be waiting for the same. Share the video with your friends, those who are preparing for any competitive exam. The session is quite significant, believe me. Do subscribe to the channel. If you have not till now, do press the bell icon along with that. That is how you'll receive notifications of all the exam relevant videos which we upload. So from here on, I'll be starting. If you stick to the session, believe me, you'll be gaining at least 50 to 60 important questions. And when you actually get them, you'll realize that each and every question was significant. The session today is way more significant than any other session. Have faith in me. Whatever you study, just after reading the first page, you'll realize what I'm going to teach you is going to be there in your exam for sure. The first topic on your screen is India in focus, right? So let's begin with India and focus and we'll be starting with the GDP of the country. Yes. So the GDP growth for the first quarter, GDP growth for the first quarter for the financial year 23-24, that means we are talking about from April to June, the GDP is 7.8%, right? The GDP is 7.8%. You may have observed it and you may have believed it and you may have seen it. So the GDP for the first quarter is 7.8%. First quarter, financial year 23-24. The next question is, Singapore's new president. Why this question is even way more significant than any other question? The reason is the president of Singapore has the Indian origin. Tamil? Yes, he has the Indian origin. That's how you have to learn it. So Singapore's new president has the Indian origin. His name is Tharman. Shangmuga Ratnam, Tharman, Shangmuga Ratnam, and he is from People's Action Party. That is the reason this question can be asked because the person is from India, like he has the Indian origin. That is what I wish to, you know, explain it this way. October declared, not here, somewhere outside the country. That is why the question is significant. You may realize it. If you write the exam, you know that such questions are asked in the exam. You know it very well. Georgia. I'm referring to Georgia. Georgia is in USA. The state in USA has declared, the governor declared it because Hindus like they, they were showing solidarity. They wanted to promote their religion. They wanted to promote their culture and traditions. And they, they started doing it. And for that reason, October was declared Hindu Heritage Month, Hindu Heritage Month in Georgia, USA. I hope you understand the significance of the question. Youth 20 Summit held in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. Youth 20 Summit took place in Varanasi, UP. Then you move to the next question, which is about WHO and Ministry of Ayush. Yes. So two important, you know, as far as we know, they're quite important from the perspective of any organization, World Health Organization and Ministry of Ayush. They were involved. As they were involved, what they actually were doing, that was WHO's first global summit. WHO's first global summit. You must be thinking they have actually had a lot many summits already. No, I'm not saying that. First global summit on traditional medicine. First global summit on traditional medicine. That is what you have to observe. Traditional medicine, WHO's first global summit on traditional medicine took place in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat. Held in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat. Let's revise what we have studied. That's how you'll be able to retain the questions after listening to them twice or maybe thrice. So I repeat often purposefully, you know that. Pardon me for the same, but I really want you to learn what I'm teaching you. GDP growth for the first Quarter, the financial year is 23-24, the one going on 7.8% according to, you know, them. 
Singapore's new president, his name is Tharman Shangmugaratnam and he has the Indian origin. That is why this question can be asked. The concern that I wish to share is that everybody forgets the party. The person is important, you know that. Quite a powerful person from now on and he's from People's Action Party. Learn the party also. October is declared. Hindu Heritage Month in Georgia by, by the governor. Georgia is in USA. Youth 20 Summit held in Varanasi, UP. The next question is Gandhinagar, Gujarat is the place where WHO and Ministry of Ayush collectively organized a global summit on traditional medicine. Let's move on to the next segment. Okay, the next, next set of questions on your screen, which is about the appointments, latest appointments. Let's see who's performing, like what rank are they performing. Let's start with the first question. We'll be starting with first, quite an, uh, quite, uh, you know, important question. You understand that because first time one person, one woman, one lady has actually become the chairperson. Yes. Chairperson of what? You must be thinking that Railway Board of India is there, which is quite old. And we have not heard that, you know, any woman could be the CEO or chairperson. Yes, this is happening for the first time. That is why the question is significant. You know that. Jaya Varma Sena, she has become that person. Jaya Varma Sena, she has become that person who could be, who could become chairperson of Railway Board of India, her picture is there. She has become the first lady to do so, to achieve such a mark. The next question is NASCOM's chairperson. You understand that when we refer to NASCOM, NASCOM's chairperson is quite an important fellow. Already they hold such sort of important ranks and they have been given, you know, these ranks further. So NASCOM's chairperson is the Cognizant India's CMD. Chairman and Managing Director already. Cognizant India CMD, whose name is Rajesh Nambiar. His picture is there on the screen. You can look at it and you understand that he has become NASCOM's chairperson now. Jaya Varma Sinha and Rajesh Nambiar. The next question is R. Madhavan. He has even got something and he has become the president of Film and Television Institute of India. So Film and Television Institute of India's president is R. Madhavan from now on. And when we move to this particular picture, he, this picture is of Manish Desai. And what are we referring to? See, when, when I teach you current affairs, what you generally do, you can actually go and check that. But the reliable sources are which are provided by the government itself. When the government, you know, a, a, publishes something, when the government makes some, something available to the general public, government's words are actually the real words which we believe in. If we have faith, if we wish to check, because these kind of questions are going to be there in your exam. If you check any other website, the problem will be that there can be wrong answers also. But in government's website, these are the right answers which you are looking for for your exam. PIB is that. You must be thinking what sort of things am I referring to. I'm actually talking about that PIB through which you can actually check what government is actually writing about all those points which I'm actually teaching you. So PIB is public, uh, is Press Information Bureau. So PIB is Press Information Bureau and the, the Principal Director General. Principal Director General for that Press Information Bureau is Manish Desai. From now on, when we move to Zimbabwe is reappointed. See, this remained, you know, quite a debatable thing. If you have checked that, his name is Emerson Nangava. Emerson Nangava is the uh, person who got reappointed as the president of Zimbabwe. Now, what he has actually done that you yourself have to check that after becoming the president again, what he did, why this remained quite, you know, a debatable thing that you yourself can check. Let's actually revise. Let me make you revise all what I've, te what I've taught you. We'll be starting with Jaya Varma Sinha. She is basically the first woman. She has become that first woman who has become the chairperson of Railway Board of India. Quite a mark. NASCOM chairperson. Ramesh, uh, Rajesh Nambiar and he is basically the CMD of Cognizant India. Rajesh Nambiar is the CMD of Cognizant India already. When you move to the uh, third picture, which is R. Madhavans and he has become the president of FTII, 
principal director general of PIB Manish Desai. The next question is about Zimbabwe's reappointed president. His name is Emerson Nangava. Let's move to the next set. Now projects and inaugurations. They seem to be the boring questions. Yes, they are, but they are important. If they are there in your exam, you should learn them. Let's learn them one by one. India's first drone common testing center. You have not heard anything like that. That is why first of its kind. First of its kind. So drone testing. Drone common testing center for the entire country. Common, that means that is what they are trying to tell you. Tamil Nadu, spend some money where you can actually test it. So India's first drone common testing facility, testing center coming up in Sri Perumburudur. <coughs> Sri Perumburudur which is in Tamil Nadu. That's the location where it is actually being built, where it is coming up. We, um, we are talking about drone unmanned, you know, flying. If you are not aware, that is why I am saying such sort of, uh, you know, drones we are referring to. So drone common testing center. This is not bro, this is BRO. BRO, Border Roads Organization is building something. What are they constructing now? They are actually coming up with Likaru, to Fukche. Likaru to Fukche, that means Likaru Migla, that means pass. Liga, Liga, Likaru Migla Fukche, they are actually coming up with world's highest motorable road. They are trying to break their own record. I am saying they are constructing, Border Roads Organization is constructing Likaru Fukche, world's highest motorable uh, uh, road. Apart from that, they are coming up with one highest fighter airfield highest fighter airfield which is like Neoma airfield so Neoma airfield is going to be world's highest fighter airfield to be very frank with you Neoma is the name of a village there where eastern Ladakh so we are saying BRO is constructing Neoma airfield at the same time Likaru Fukche La let's move to the next question India's first indigenous, that means the country made it, the country has it. So it is for the country, it, country it is from the country. I'm saying India's first in, indigenous, 700 megawatt, that's quite a remarkable mark. <coughs> so 700 megawatt nuclear plant at Kakrapad Atomic Power Project in Gujarat. It has started you know, it has become uh, functional with its full capacity. That is the news I was saying in else first. Indigenous 700 megawatt nuclear plant, Kakrapal Atomic Power Project, which is in Gujarat. The next question is redevelopment of 508 stations. Although stations are many, like presently they are focusing on 508 stations on which they will be spending 24,470 crores. They'll be spending this sort of huge amount in the redevelopment of 508 stations under Amrit Bharat station scheme. We are talking about railway stations if you don't get that. So they are revamping the stations, 508 stations will be redeveloped and Amrit Bharat station scheme is actually the scheme under which such sort of redevelopment, such sort of revamping is actually taking place. The money they are spending, the cost of which is going to be 24,470 crores. So this sort of amount will be spent. Let's revise all the questions what we have studied. So projects and inauguration, India's first drone common testing center in Sri Perumbudur, Tamil Nadu, BRO is coming up with Likaru, Migla, Fukche, world's highest motorable road and Nyoma airfield in East Ladakh. 700 megawatt nuclear plant for India's first indigenous nuclear power plant, 700 megawatt which has the capacity that huge and Kakrapad atomic power project in Gujarat is the one. Redevelopment of 508 stations under Amrit Bharat station scheme which is going to have the cost of 24,470 crores. Let's move to the next questions. Okay, those students who are not preparing for banking exams can take a break of a few minutes. If you haven't pressed the like button, you can do that. I am expecting it from you because I'm actually trying to get a lot many questions for you. You can actually press the button for that reason. Anyway, 
take a break of a few minutes banking and finance news there on the screen value financial inclusion index march this is 60.1 I wish to tell you something. See what happens is like financial inclusion is something that far flung areas are there and we are actually making financial services available to all the people who are actually living in far flung areas, how much they are able to access, how many financial services they are able to approach, what is their affordability, everything is actually you know seen by this index. So that index is their financial inclusion index. 60.1 60.1 financial inclusion index has the value of 60.1 now and India's first co-branded credit card you must be thinking what is new about it it is a hotel credit card so that is why it is a new thing and it is actually with Marriott now I'll repeat India's first that is why more important co-branded credit card co-branded hotel credit card first by Marriott Bonvoy, Marriott Bonvoy and HDFC Bank. That's the question. Can be asked in your exam? Nation's first transit card. You may have not heard anything like that. Transit card, travel card for the travelers, for the commuters, so that they can travel seamlessly anywhere by using this card. And it is going to be quite an experience for you. SBI is saying that. So SBI is national SBI is first transit national. Nations first transit card. SBI's first nations first. Nations first transit card. India's first UPI ATM by Hitachi payment services. You must be thinking Hitachi makes the ACs and all. And we have only heard the Hitachi's ACs now into financial services. Yes. So Hitachi payment services, I am saying they are providing white label ATMs, but the ATMs are UPI enabled. So it is like the new thing that you have to be aware of. India's first U UPI ATM by Hitachi Payment Services. UPI conversational ATM payments. Conversational payments that means you can speak. That is why hello UPI hello hello. That is the name when you actually speak over the phone. You say hello. That is why hello UPI hello UPI by NPCI. It is here. Bharat Bill Pay Connect Connect. Bharat Bill Pay Connect and hello UPI by NPCI National Payments Corporation of India. So both are actually making conversational sort of thing available for the general public. You can call them up, you can make your you know, you can do whatever you feel like, like making the payments of the bills, not not otherwise. UPI conversational payments, hello UPI through hello UPI conversational again, voice enabled bill payment through Bharat bill pay connect. We are going to repeat value of financial inclusion index 60.1 India's first co-branded hotel credit card Marriott Bonvoy HDFC Bank nation's first transit card by SBI Hitachi's UPI enabled ATMs UPI conversational payments through hello UPI and through bill pay connect Bharat bill pay connect and they are from connect and hello UPI are from NPCI. Let's move to the next question state news now on your screen. Let's see what is happening in the states. You may have seen smart cities. You should. The National Smart City Award. National Smart City Award was given to Indore, the cleanest city. We all know that. So Indore received it. Second number, Surat, and the third one is like Agra. National Smart City Award was given to these three. Three of them are important. Although the first one is quite significant, you know that. Out of all these, Let's keep them away and we'll be starting with Union Territory, which remained on top in Smart City Award, Chandigarh State Award, National Smart City Award has state awards also in which MP remained on top, Tamil Nadu second and the joint recipients are UP and Rajasthan on the third rank. National Smart City Award was given to Indore, it remained on top, Indore remained on top. Post that Union Territory remained on top was Chandigarh and state remained on top was Madhya Pradesh. Let's move to the next question. Grey Lakshmi scheme. That's the scheme everybody looks for. The woman head of the family. Yes, every woman head of the family will be getting 2000 from the government. That is what the scheme is all about from Karnataka. So Karnataka government is coming up with Grey Lakshmi scheme. The name is quite apt quite appropriate that that's the name which should be actually you know kept into account. Grey Lakshmi scheme offering 
2000 monthly to women women head of families in karnataka let's move to the next question india is 54th india is 54th but rajasthan's 5th india is 54th but rajasthan's 5th tiger reserve yes they may ask you the name of that tiger reserve which is dholpur karoli tiger reserve dholpur Ka Ta karoli tiger reserve rajasthan's 5th tiger reserve and india's 54th tiger reserve chief ministers breakfast scheme in all primary schools by tamil nadu if you have not heard i'll remind you of something have you read ncert at some point of time you may have in ncert the the clear description of a state was there which was tamil nadu in which mid day meal scheme was offered by tamil nadu started by tamil nadu firstly it was implemented there in tamil nadu only so the mention of tamil nadu was there in mid day meal scheme when the scheme was brought it was quite a success you know that that is the reason such schemes are there they are the real welfare schemes you must understand that people have to obtain literacy they have to be literate so i don't wish to comment on that literacy is quite important you guys know that to make them literate like every strata should get the education and how they'll be doing it they'll not be malnutrition they'll not be actually uh, being away from the nutritious food or anything like that apart from the food apart from the nutritious food they'll be coming to the school the attendance will spike you know that millions of students will be benefited by such sort of things they'll be getting nutritious food you must understand that they'll be coming to school they'll be learning also so the literacy will also increase by such sort of welfare schemes truly a welfare scheme cm's breakfast scheme in all primary schools talent uh, you know that chief minister is talent so he did that that is tamil nadu the scheme which is applying it we are revising and why i make you revise all that that is how you'll be able to retain these questions easily national smart city award to indore union territory chandigarh state madhya pradesh rai lakshmi scheme you know karnataka's to the women head of the family 2000 rupees every month so india is 54th and rajasthan's 5th tiger reserve karoli dholpur karoli tiger reserve chief minister breakfast scheme for all primary schools in this state that is Tamil Nadu. Let's move to the next question. Sports news on your screen now. We'll be starting with Mohan Bagan. So you have heard that, like quite an old, you know, you can say a club. So Mohan Bagan, <coughs> that club, athletic club, and you know, East Bengal's club. So I'm referring to football basically. If you have not heard that, Durand Cup is associated with football. Durand Cup is associated with football and a uh, long-awaited. Bhuvan Bagan lifted the trophy, lifted the cup by defeating East Bengal. You can actually call them the clubs, which are the top performers of a sort. Yes, they are. So I'm saying Bhuvan Bagan won that by defeating East Bengal Football Club and lifted Durand Cup. Let's move to U.S. Open now. Quite an important session. Each and every question, whatever I've taught you, I tried my level best not to waste your time. Please believe me. Have faith in me. If you haven't pressed the bell icon, haven't pressed the like button, please do that. If you wish to join us, the numbers are given below. You can actually dial us. We deliver sessions. We we teach you in complete English medium as well. We actually have Hindi medium sessions also. The classes are in Hindi medium also and in English medium also. You can choose the medium on our website. Join us. you can actually take the help from our teachers and every teacher is going to help you in the similar manner they will provide you all the important questions which are quite significant for your exam the numbers are given below you can speak with our executives also now us open men singles novak djokovic quite an evident sort of response 24th grand slam 24th grand slam novak djokovic 24th grand slam that he actually won He is from Serbia. He defeated Daniel Medvedev. Daniel Medvedev is from Russia. When you move to the women singles, so it is Coco Goff. She is from USA. Coco Goff is from USA, and she defeated Arayna Sabalenka. She is from Belarus. So Arayna Sabalenka got defeated by Coco Goff. The next question is men's double. Rajiv Ram, USA. Rajiv Ram and Joe Salisbury lifted the title of. Men's doubles, women's doubles: Gabriela Dabrowski and Erin Rutilov. Women's doubles: Gabriela and Erin. 
Gabriela and Erin. Next doubles, Anna Danilina, Anna Danilina and Harry Hiliovara. So these are the winners of mixed doubles. I'm going to repeat. Mohan Bagan defeated East Bengal and lifted Durant Cup. US Open men's singles Novak Djokovic defeated Daniel Medvedev. Coco Goff defeated Irana Sabalenka in women's singles. Men's doubles lifted by Rajiv Ram and Joe Salisbury. Women's doubles Gabriela and Erin. Mixed doubles Anna and Hari. The names are comparatively easier. Try to retain the names. That is why I've repeated. The next question is awards and honors. Quite significant sort of questions. Have faith. Whatever question is there on your screen, please don't miss that. Learn it carefully. PM awarded Grand Cross of the Order of Honor. Like from Greece only. So Greece, Grand Cross of the Order of Honor. Grand Cross, Grand Cross of the Order of Honor. Like from Greece, Raymond Mixes Award. You will rarely listen to such a thing. That a doctor received such an award. It never happened actually to be very frank with you. So we are saying Dr. Ravi Kannan. He is an oncologist. Oncologist is somebody who treats cancer, tumors and all. So oncologist is that sort of branch. If you are not aware of the meaning of the word oncologist, write it down somewhere. Oncologist treats cancer. Oncologist treats cancer. And I am saying he is from Assam. Quite a famous person. As far as I can recall, he's a Padma Shri awardee as well. So Dr. Ravi Kannan is that person who received Raymond Maxese Award 2023. Quite a thing that you must learn. A plus rating for the Shakti Kanta Das. He is RBI's governor, you know that. He is our RBI's governor, Shakti Kanta Das. He got A plus rating in bankers list. What does it mean? It means that Global Finance Central Banker report card came in. Global Finance Central Bank Bank Banker Report Card, you know, that was declared in which he received A plus rating. Rajiv Gandhi National Sadbhavna Award. Rajiv Gandhi National Sadbhavna Award was given to Banasthali Vidyapeet University, which is in Rajasthan. I'll repeat. We are talking about 25th numbers. Rajiv Gandhi National Sadbhavna Award, which was given to Banasthali Vidyapeet, which is in Rajasthan. And it is for the year 2021. Maharashtra is first ever. See, Udyog Ratna Award was given for the first time. Udyog Ratna Award, you can see awards and honors in which I'm saying Udyog Ratna Award was given for the very first time. It is like by Maharashtra government only. You may have seen the CM and Deputy CM. It was given to Ratan Tata. I am saying Ratan Award. Ratna Award was given to Ratan Tata. Ratan Award was given to Ratna, Ratan Tata. You can learn it that way. Maharashtra's first ever Udyog Ratna Award was given to Ratan Tata. I'll make you revise all that. PM awarded Grand Cross of the Order of Honor, Greece, Raymond Maxese Award to an oncologist, Dr. Ravi Kannan. A plus rating in Global Finance Central Bankers Report Card to Shakti Kanta Das. Rajiv Gandhi National Sadbhavna Award to Banasali Vidyapeet, which is in Rajasthan. Maharashtra's first ever Udyog Ratna Award was given to Ratan Data. Let's move to the next set of questions. And that is going to be the last page for the day. You have learnt a lot many days already, I know that. Try to revise them because, you know, out of a lot many, these are the important ones. International Day of Charity is observed on 5th September. And the reason behind, you know, you know, celebrating such a day, such a day on 5th September only because it was the death anniversary of the great Mother Teresa. Yes, the great, great missionary that we all know. International Day of Charity is observed on 5th September because it is the death anniversary of Mother Teresa. International Literacy Day, literacy is important. International Literacy Day is observed on 8th of September. Theme is quite important, but it is quite long as well. You will not be able to learn it in one class only, but write it down at least. Promoting literacy for a world in transition. Promoting literacy for a world in transition. The change is there, the transition is taking place. So promoting literacy for a world in transition, building the foundation for sustainable and peaceful societies. Literacy Day, 8th September. Charity Day, 5th September. Hindi Divas, 14th September. Hindi Divas is something else. When the whole world celebrates Hindi Day, it is World Hindi Day. That is observed on 10th January. So there are two days. 
Hindi Divas, 14 September. World Hindi Day is celebrated on 10th of January. World Ozone Day is observed on 16th September. When you refer to the theme, probably will take time to retain it. But I'll actually try to make it easier for you. You may have heard about Montreal Protocol, the treaty, the agreement. Now, what is it all about? Ozone is depleting. You may have heard that in your school days also back then. So ozone layer is there. It is depleting. Now they have had a treaty. They have had an agreement on base based on that. That will not be using the production, will not be doing the production, will not be using such substances which harm the ozone layer. So we'll be phasing such things out, will not be using them, will be removing you know, them from the use. And this is Montreal Protocol Agreement is all about. So Mont Montreal Protocol Agreement is about the environment. And I'm saying, World Ozone Day is observed on, uh, is celebrated on 16 September. The theme is Montreal Protocol, fixing the ozone layer and reducing climate change. So I mean, I make you revise all that. International Day of Charity, 5th September, 8th September Literacy Day, 14th September Hindi Divas, 16th September World Ozone Day. With that, we have come to an end of this session. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked it, do press the like button. Thank you so much.